Um, so if you are in the lead the pack breakout, you are in the right spot. This is where you want to be. Um, we're going to talk a little bit today about what it is um, to be a leader. Like just kind of the basics of what getting started and how being a leader can affect your business and why it's so important. So first off, uh, raise your hand if you, if you have one person underneath you, you are a leader. So raise your hand if you have recruited at least one person, even if they fell off, even if you know they're not with you anymore. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. Look at how many, look around, look at how many leaders in here. You guys all did a big scary thing because you asked someone to join their team or if they came up to you and said, I wanna join your team and you're like, no, I, I'm not ready. I don't know what I'm doing. No, do not join my team. Seriously. I have a friend who told someone, don't join my team. I don't know what I'm doing. Don't join my team. And she's a great leader now, but at first she was telling people, don't join my team. I don't know what I'm doing. But guess what? You can learn together. You can learn together. I know girls, I've sponsored girls who sponsored their friend within weeks of them joining. And they're doing a great job. You're doing a great job. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna make her nervous. Sorry, my, I'm, they're making me nervous. Okay, they, I'm like, don't go to my talk. Go to the other, you know, girls talk because you hear me talk all the time. They're like, no, no, we're gonna, we're gonna come and see you. We're gonna make you nervous. Thanks. Okay, so I don't know if I said this already, but my name is Molly Maurer, and I'm from Central Wisconsin, um, it's a tiny town. I'm not gonna say. Oh, we're Wisconsin people. Yes, go back. Woo! I can say that in this okay. no. um, And I have been with Sensi just over seven years now. Um, I've been a director for five. Love Sensi. Love it, love it. Um, when I joined, my why was I was working two jobs, barely got to see my one year old son. My husband got to stay home with him, and so I was working two jobs, and my Sensi consultant came up to me and was like, Okay, I see you working two jobs. I see how much you hate it. Look how much I've made off of doing just your parties. And I'm like, oh snap, okay. And that's just my parties? And she goes, yeah, I, I do more parties than this. I'm like, okay, okay. So I, after a year of being her best customer, decided to join. And in 2015, I decided to retire my full-time job as an ophthalmic technician and do Sensi full-time. So, I love what I do. I love that my ultimate why now has been staying with home with my kids because who doesn't love being there for all the firsts? I know it's not everyone's favorite job, but my favorite job is being a mom. And, and then two, getting to go out, getting to meet new people, getting to help inspire other women and men to have something that's theirs, you know? I mean, Sensi can be different for every, every one of us and what it does for us, but I just love how it can inspire you to go after big things, whatever your big thing may be. Whatever your mountain may be, like we were talking earlier. So, um, like I said, uh, been seven years now, still get nervous. Uh, last year I presented for the first time and they're asking me to do it again. I'm like, is it a smaller group? They're like, yeah, but you have to do it two times now. And I'm like, oh, okay, let's do this. All right, so um, why now? Um, last year, that segues into what I'm gonna talk about today. Last year I talked about Maven. How many people were went to a talk about Maven last year? Good job. And how many people got Maven or AMI and are using it? Oh, come on people, you are missing out. And not just in follow-up, okay? So I had no follow-up game before Maven. I tried a couple different things. You know, you write down people's names, you put them in a file folder and you say, okay, I'm gonna contact them in two months and then you forget. It just doesn't happen. So along with follow-up, Maven can also help you reach out to your team. They just recently added um, a feature where you can go on, they, when you do, I believe it's just the paid version, but it's not much, I think it's like $4.99 a month. And what it does is three times a month, it tells you, hey, you need to reach out to this person and just rally them, see what their goals are for this month, see what's gonna be happening with them this month. Okay, so I reach out to them. And then halfway through the month, okay, check in, see how they're doing, see how they're doing. Oh, all right, yep, that's that time, okay. And then at the end of the month, three, four days left, it says, hey, rally this person, here we go. So then it takes all the guesswork out of it. 
you get the little, I mean, you get the little alerts on your phone, right? Like, so when you get a text message, it has a little one above it or whatever. And I hate seeing that like little red number up there. I want it gone. So then I'm going to go ahead and do those right away. And it's off my list. And plus, I'm not writing it like down. I don't have to remember this. Maven just messages me and says, hey, today's the day. You need to go ahead and message these people. So that's what I love about it because, again, it's just one less thing that we have to remember. There's so many different systems that we have to remember. This is something you just download and it just does the work for you. Now, I have to say like, when it comes to basic, it's, it's very basic right now. It doesn't do a whole lot for you. Like it doesn't tell you your team's numbers. It doesn't, but that's what the workstation's for. But it will remind you of their sent anniversaries. So that way, like, Leslie just had a sent anniversary here and it reminded me, hey, you gotta go tell Leslie. I'm like, oh, thank goodness. This way I didn't have to dig into the workstation and Leslie's not sitting at home like, Molly forgot my sent anniversary. <laughs> I'm so upset. Why would she forget my sent anniversary? Doesn't she love me? No, I do love you. But this just makes it easier because I love a lot of people on our team. <laughs> so as you get bigger teams, it gets a little bit harder. So starting these little small practices now will make it so much easier for you later because it's something that's completely, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, it's um, duplicatable. So like you start things now that are small and don't do anything too big. Like if you're gonna start, I'm getting ahead of myself, but starting small so that way when you have a team of like 100 someday, it'll be easy for you to remember because you put these things into practice now, right? Okay. Um, frontline focus is another thing that, uh, okay, uh, frontline focus. So what I do every month, who here tracks their own numbers? So like in the beginning of our beautiful Sensi planner, at the beginning of each month, it tells you to track your numbers each day. Does anybody do this? You're a director, I know you do this. <laughs> so what I do is I track my numbers. And then what I do for my frontline, just my frontline. So frontline means someone you have personally sponsored. Not like I sponsored you know, my friend and then she sponsored a friend. I'm not tracking that friend, I'm just tracking someone I sponsored. I write down their PRV. If they have a team, I write down their TR TWV. And then I write down how many people are on their team, just a couple other little numbers, but I do this once a month at the end of the month because I want them, I don't want to remember, like she had a really great month last year, this month. Last March, she was fantastic. And she's not really hitting that this month. I probably should reach out to her and see what's going on and just kind of so you can go back in and dig. And it takes one day, one minute that day at the end of the month saying, hey, I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna write down their numbers and if there's people that I think could use a little digging into or you notice, hey, you know, my friend Stacy hasn't sold anything in three months. This is her fourth month. I have to get her going if she's gonna stay with Sensi or at least I need to find out what her intentions are. If she wants to leave, that's okay. That's totally fine. But just making sure that you know what, what's going on with her so she doesn't feel like you just completely forgot her, okay? And again, it gets more when you have bigger teams. Um, coaching calls is another thing I like to do with my team. And now this looks very different across the board for directors, what we do. Some directors, and I've done this before too, where you will have a coaching call, you have them fill out a form ahead of time, just like a little outline, a couple questions, like, oh, you know, what have you exhausted your list of 100? Have you, you know, sold at least 500 the last month? You know, whatever the question may be, and then you ask that front line, in this questionnaire, what do you want to talk about? You schedule time, and then during that 15, 20 minutes, however long you decide the call's gonna be, you make sure that you only talk business because everyone's time is precious and you wanna really get down to brass tacks and really get down into working with them and seeing what their issue is. Like, okay, they're trying to get active, they're trying to get 200. How do I get you to 200? Have you tried this? You know, there's sheets that go around on the internet saying 50 ways to reach 200 PRV. Have you done this? You know, go through different ways because there might be something that is obvious to you that they never thought about. And it happens all the time. Sometimes, you know, my team will say something to me. I'm like, oh yeah, I could do that. I mean, it's all about a sharing circle. But doing those coaching calls gives you one-on-one -on -one time like that. I like to do one-on-one -on -one coffee with my girls that are close, that are lucky enough to be close to me. 
You can do lives, one-on-one -on -one live coaching calls with them, but not everyone wants this, so don't force it. Don't feel like you have to. If they want it, go ahead and set it up. But then I also have girls who are like, I'm good. I just put in, excuse me, I just put in my 200 every three to four months. I'm just here to get the free stuff every once in a while. And then I know to just back off. You don't have to spend a lot of time on them. Just put the time into the people that want your time and they're going to work hard with your time, right? Because you your time's valuable too. You're trying to work a business, you know? And I'll give a little more to that in a second here. Um, I'm all over the place, so I'm just making sure with my notes I'm getting a high up on what I'm doing here. Put that copy. Okay. Um, another great way to keep your team focused, to keep your team engaged, is a team Facebook page. Now, of you leaders in here, how many of you have a team Facebook page? Whether you have it, or you're on your director's page, or you're on your superstar director's page, you guys have a Facebook page where you get together? Okay, that's perfect. This is a great environment for learning and fun. You can put random stuff on there, like the other day, you know, you put, like, I'm obsessed with that Love is Blind show. Have you guys seen that? Oh my God, it's so stupid. It's so stupid, but I can't with it. And you know, you put who's your favorite couple and then have them, you know, who is this? What's going on? It starts a conversation. You want to keep engagement up because it does take work to get that engagement going to get people to start to talk to you and to get to people to trust you. And for some of my girls who've been on my team longer, they know that there are times where our team page is dead. Like, I feel. Like I am pulling it out of them and just come on guys. But then there's other times where everybody and their brother is posting stuff. There is videos, there's questions, there's all kinds of fun stuff flying around. So that's when I really love it because you know, it's, it gets everybody engaged, it gets everybody excited. And you know, they, someone sees something they love and they share it and then everyone else gets jazzed up and starts sharing more. So having a team page or a team environment that you keep cultivating and you don't have to like, be a slave to it. Post once a day like a fun tip or post once a day like on Training Tuesdays. Since he does Training Tuesdays every Tuesday. Not everyone can make it to the call because I know it's during the day and a lot of people work, but you can go back to that. Post on there, hey, this training is happening today. If you can't make it at this time, make it another time. Let people know about the stuff that's happening around them and the tools that are available to them and it gets engagement going because people are like, oh, that sounds like a really good one, or oh, I've been wondering about this, whatever the case may be. Um, let me see. It helps to go live on your team page. It really, really does. And the team page is the best place to start going live if you haven't yet, even on your personal page, because those people love you. They joined your team, they trust you, they wanna hang out with you, so if you just wanna practice going live on there, and having them talk to you, by all means, that's the easiest place to go. My team, they love it when I go live, even if I'm a totally a hot mess weirdo when I'm on there and I'm like, I just got my boys out of the tub and I'm a hot mess, but let's just talk sensey. And it doesn't have to be a long time, but it's fun because you just say, okay, what questions do you have for me? And it becomes an open conversation for the team members that I have in Pennsylvania and the team members I have in Texas and everybody becomes one big group. So little tools like that, I mean, the internet is a huge tool for connecting all of us, so it's a great way to learn to lead and to find information on leading, too. Um, also, another thing I'll do is I'll have other leaders go on my team page. So if you have a super small team page or if you don't think you know a lot of leaders, just have someone else on your team talk, and that helps them practice, and that helps them get used to coaching. So, you know, if I say, hey, um, who haven't I called? Cat, <laughs> I'm calling all my team members with names out here. I'm like, Cat, you know what? You're going to go on TED. And I want, I, would you want to go on and talk on our team page for anything, any amount of time about anything? No. Boom. <laughs> You're going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to make you do it. <laughs> but no, just asking people like that. I've met other directors through Sensi, so I'll be like, hey, one of my friends is fantastic with business budgeting and business numbers and setting up a business budget, and I've had her come and talk on our team page before, and I'll do it again because she is my numbers queen, and it just makes so much sense. It's wonderful. So having people that have different areas of expertise, expertise coming in and sharing because 
they hear me and you hear me and I'm going to miles and you just don't understand what I'm saying anymore and you're just so excited and some people don't relate to that right but if I have my friend come on and she has a totally different way of speaking they might see her and go that's it now I get it I could have said it four times the same way but because of the way she's saying it having other people come and talk on your team page is huge another good thing is team get-togethers whether they be online or um, in person I do Christmas parties I do wax our favorites are wax sample making parties we just sit around and make wax samples and talk business and it's like an hour or two and I make cookies and we, yeah we just sit and chat and then everybody goes home with a ton of samples and that's another good reason for people to get stuff out there and get their businesses working um, we have done work get-togethers um, online, I know Shayla, who was talking here before, and I love this idea, and I want to start doing this idea. She will do team movie nights, and her team is nowhere near her. So what she does is she says, okay, everybody, we're going to get on Netflix, and we're going to watch this movie, and we're going to start a text thread, and we're just going to talk about this movie while we sit here together. I'm like, that's genius for people that aren't around. Or, you know, Zoom calls, getting on Zoom and just having a conversation and chatting back and forth. I believe Zoom is still free. Was that, was that the signal? Oh, oh, sorry, I saw you put your hand up and I'm like, she's supposed to give me the signal. I'm like, how am I doing? How am I doing my time? Um, uh, what was that? Uh, Zoom. 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 Zooms. 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 <laughs> I believe that 40, the 40 minutes are still free. So you can have a paid account where it takes a lot longer or you can have the 45 minutes where you just chat and talk and you can have a topic ready to share with your team. Say, What's everyone struggling with this month? And they'll be like, oh, I'm struggling with recruiting. Okay, let's talk about recruiting. Let's talk about recruiting. Even if you feel like you don't know a ton about recruiting, go watch a video, right? There are so many leaders out there like Allison Dahlke and uh, Katie Farner and, oh, just name it off. Uh, Christina Stan, oh, I love Christina. She's a hot mess just like me. Um, and so, yeah, Christina Stainbrook. I mean, there's a lot of different leaders out there who have great videos that you just say, okay, I'm going to set a timer today and I'm going to set a timer and I'm going to watch a video for a half an hour about learning to recruit, right? I'm going to set a timer and I'm going to watch about sponsoring. I'm going to set a timer and I'm going to learn about leadership. There are so many different tools out there, and on our workstation, too. They've added so many different videos for people to go and, and take advantage of. So please utilize these tools and pass them on. Sharing is caring. Okay. Um, let's see here. I talked about expectations with um, what you're doing now, making sure it's relatable for a team of 100. So let's say you're doing, like, I like to do little challenges. Because some of my team members really like a challenge and they like to win things. Mm -hmm. So I'll do, okay, if you reach 500 by the 15th of the month, your name and everybody else's name are going into a drawing and you can win a $25 gift card to the Sensi store, right? Or I'm gonna pick, you know, these, you know, if these five people are active by this time, you know, whatever, first act, five active people get a $5 coffee card something little. You don't want to do much bigger than that because if you're doing that, if you're doing a big, big gift for a small team and then down the road you have a team of a hundred and they're like, well she used to give so much better gifts. She used to just give away the farm. Well yeah, I had to stop doing that because the farm got bigger. Okay? <laughs> so you want to make sure that if gifts are your love language, if Happy mail is your love language. I love to send happy mail. And the top 10 PRV in my group, they just get a little card that says, oh my God, look at you. You were number nine last month. I am so super stinking proud of you, right? So you are gonna get, you know, just a postcard. And when you get, when you get mail that isn't bills, yes. that isn't junk, and it's colorful, and it might have glitter on it, and you're like, I was amazing last month. Look at me. And then when you get that stuff, you take a picture of it and you put it on your Facebook and you're like, look at how good I'm doing at Sensei. And everyone's like, yay, I wanna buy more from you because you're awesome and you're gonna stick around. So yeah, little, just stick with the little stuff. I mean, you don't have to, you don't wanna go broke giving gifts to your team or trying to buy their love. That's not what it's about. 
Um, and now the last thing I want to talk about, and this isn't always the most fun thing to talk about with leadership, but starting this early is important, is setting boundaries with your team, okay? Has anyone heard of the 80-20 rule? Oh, why? Oh, I see it. Yep. <laughs> A couple hands. Okay, so what that means is you spend 80% on your own business and 20% with your team, right? Because your business is the rock. Yours is the one that has to be there over time. PRV, uh, recruiting, you have to keep that rock working, right? <coughs> you have to make sure that you are hitting your goals before you help someone else hit their goals, right? So if you spend too much time over here, over here is going to get real stagnant. And your customers are going to be like, where'd she go? What's happening? And then all of a sudden, all of them are going to your girls, and which, I mean, I'm fine sharing consult, you know, customers go right ahead. I can find more. But the thing is, is that you have to go find more, right? So you want to make sure that you're spending your time wisely. And another thing to go hand in hand with that is setting business hours. They talked about it this morning. I, when I hit director, had to set a stop to some things. Um, people will message me at midnight. People will message me at two in the morning. And this is like customers, team, whatever the case may be. I put a do not disturb on my phone. If I see a message that comes to me that has to do with Sensi past nine o'clock, it waits till the next morning. Because for my own sanity, I can't always be on. I can't always be, you know, right there. You know, you have to make sure that you're setting that boundary and that you're teaching that to them. Because if you feel like I'm there for you all the time, then that's, you're gonna be like, I don't wanna be a leader. She'll message me back at midnight. She must never sleep because she's stuck being a leader and she doesn't get to have any fun. Like, what is going on over here? You wanna make sure that you are setting a plan in place that you can be consistent with and it's gonna make you happy. You don't want it to drain you. Cause then that's no fun. And then you're like, oh, this is Groundhog's Day. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm getting the same questions over and over again. And speaking to the same questions, have you heard of the Sensi chain of command? Has any your sponsor or anyone ever told you the chain of command? No one. No one. Wow. Okay. So I like to tell my girls the chain of command. First, if you can't find the answer, if you don't know the answer to something, where should you go? Workstation. Yes. Can't find it on the workstation. Where do you go? Sponsor. Close. Sponsor or to your, if you have a group page, like the Facebook page we were talking about, go there. If you can't get a hold, if you can, don't get an answer there, go to your sponsor if you haven't already. And then, if I'm not your sponsor, you can come to me because I'm there. And I, so in, in my day, I have gotten some questions like, girl, that's right there. That is right there on the workstation. So I'll just wait. And I'll give them like an hour and I'll be like, I'm gonna see if they can find it first. I'm gonna see if it's there. Because you don't want to get to a point where they skip the workstation, they skip the team page, they skip the sponsor and they come to you. And you're like, you can find this. I believe in you, you can do this. I know you can. So setting those boundaries and, and empowering them to find their own answers is gonna help them be a better leader too. It's going to help them be like empowered in their own business because when you sign your contract, you are an independent business owner, right? I'm here to help you. I really am, and I love to help. But I also want to see if by helping you, by not helping you sometimes, can help you. Does that make sense? Does that sound super mean? I hope not. <laughs> I mean, it just it helps your sanity, guys, because you don't want to be getting a question at midnight. How much is a three pack of bars? <laughs> how much is a how what what size light bulb does this warmer need girl mm -mm. you're gonna have to wait till 8 a.m i'm not i'm not doing that one okay how much time do we have left six minutes okay we've got some time all right i'm gonna have you pull out your uh Work -book. workbook workbooks thank you thank you and we're gonna do a little one-on-one -on -one discussion okay so pick someone next to you if you see someone sitting alone pick them Okay, 
And what we're gonna do is, I want you to build a new relationship with someone that you don't really know well yet, and I want you to have an authentic conversation like you would with a downline. So recognize your differences, try to find commonalities, try to find ways to work together, but do it like an interview. Like, how do you like to be taught? How do you like to, you know, find information? Does this make sense? <laughs> so pretend like you just recruited each other and I want you to just learn a couple things about that person, about your learning style. Do you like to watch YouTube videos? Do you like to read books? Do you like to listen to books because reading books is too much time? Um, whatever the case may be, just pair off. If you have to have a group of three, totally fine. And I'm going to give you a couple minutes just to have a leadership conversation. <laughs> 